Hi there Aquarius. Welcome to a special reading called a spiritual pep talk and this is for early May 2019. Um, so I'm doing this for everybody who's born under the sun sign of Aquarius and if you would like your own private pep talk <laughs> um, please check the offer below because um, I'm doing it um, as just uh, just kind of like I, I always like to to change things up a little bit um, just for my own personal sake. It's fun to experiment. So um, I have um, a special going on right now for that. You can check that out below this video. And I'm going to be picking three cards, three tarot cards, I should say, and then a... Um, an oracle card and this month and if I ever <laughs> I don't know if I'll keep doing it every month but at least this month is going to be the native spirit deck and uh, this is what it looks like on the back so I'll be picking one of those cards and three of the tarot cards And the, the idea of the spiritual pep talk is just to focus, take these three cards and riff on them. And I'm going to read from the booklet when, when we talk about the um, Native Spirit card. I just cut the card. Ooh, you got that one. And, um, and talk about that and just see what common threads are here. So the first card we have here is the Hangman, and this is a card of um, being in limbo sometimes, or just hanging out and waiting. Usually there's a sense of waiting, or it can be a sense of surrender. And, you know, the first thing that popped in my mind was the serenity prayer in AA. God grant me the wisdom to know the difference between what I can control and what I can't. And part of surrender is simply letting go of needing to control something. That's what it means. It doesn't mean I give up, uh, there's no way I can have what I want, blah, blah, blah. No, it means I give up trying to control the outcome. If the outcome isn't how I want it, I might be disappointed, but it is what it is. But I'm going to relinquish control of the situation. The hangman can also be a card of sacrifice. And I always say that sacrifice is not really sacrifice. When you're, ma when you're trying to make somebody happy, and you don't have any ulterior motives. But how many people do that? There's, you know, even people who claim to be altruistic, a lot of times probably have a um, hidden motive for why they're doing this. And that's not to put them down, uh, but being totally altruistic means that you don't have any kind of sense of trying to get something by helping somebody, by uh, doing something for somebody else. So there may be somebody that you love so much that you are willing to relinquish what you want in favor of them. And um, this is just acknowledging that it's really not a loss or sacrifice because you feel a sense of fulfillment by helping them. An example would be many people towards their children. Um, if you feel that you're sacrificing in terms of I'm having a miserable life in order for you to have a good life, well, that's not going to work, is it? But I don't see that as being sacrifice. I see that more as um, 
being a martyr. You know, maybe believing that suffering is inevitable in life in terms of everyday experiences and not realizing that you can be happy and that, you know, that life is, is supposed to be about embracing personal happiness and that we don't have to play the martyr. So that's a hangman. And then we have in the middle the Queen of Wands, which is a card of the female, <laughs> look at the cat, the female, um, the working mother. Uh, so those two cards together, we could talk about sacrifice with this idea of who is going to be the perfect parent. And especially as a woman, do you have to um, sacrifice your own dreams so that you can stay at home with your child? And if you work, are you not sacrificing being a good enough parent? Because um, this idea that you can have it all might not be accurate either. So we have this third card. And by the way, the, the, the Queen of Wands is associated with Sagittarius. And here's another card in the Major Arcana associated with Sagittarius. The Temperance card. So this is about kind of a balance. One foot on water, in the water, and one foot on land. So this can be a situation of um, somebody who is not extreme. And maybe if you have in the past, Aquarius, sacrificed and, and not had your career in order to raise children, now you feel like you have earned the right to do it, but you don't want to go too much in the other direction. So maybe you need that sense of balance. Um, I'm trying to think of, I mean, that really uh, seems so clear to me that that would be going through maybe some Aquarius people's minds. And perhaps um, you have been a bit uh, unsure whether or not you even want to become a parent. And you're afraid that you have to like become this, this super mom the super parent and that you can't have any balance and the temperance card is saying yes you can have that sense of balance in your life you don't have to like go full on with anything even if you're told that you do the hangman is really an interesting card to me because it can uh, simply be this sense of being in a holding pattern of sorts, sometimes you may be waiting for somebody else to make that decision of whether or not they are willing to have a child. Maybe this is your partner and they are undecided. And uh, in any case, with the temperance card, it is about being very uh, balanced in your perspective, but also wanting both sides of life, wanting that spiritual side and wanting that uh, maybe more material side that the land represents. With the Queen of Wands, that can be carried away where the person feels like I'm in charge. Uh, there's an enthusiasm, but if the the Aquarius person feels pent up, they may, as the Queen of Wands, 
be even a little bit, or when I said pent up, I meant if you've spent so much time at home and you're gaining this uh, experience or just remembering what it was like to work outside of the home, it could be quite empowering for you. But you have to watch out for being too arrogant because that's what the Queen of Wands, or, you know, that drama-filled individual. I'm going to hold this up again just because I think it's so pretty, just the colors themselves. Oh, there's a little stag or whatever you call it. Okay. Let's read from the booklet. Shapeshifter. And I think we know a little bit about shapeshifters. Let's see here. You can be anything you desire. Let go of attachment to your identity. <laughs> so do you see any kind of synchronicity or connection with those first two cards? You can be anything you want to be, Aquarius. Let go of your identity. Now, with the Queen of Wands, um, I just want to say Aquarius is a masculine sign. So even women who are Aquarians can feel conflicted when it comes to opposite sex deep relationships and or becoming a mother or become you could say becoming a parent in general because um, there may always be this sense of I don't want that to be my main identity maybe Aquarius wants to be seen as something unusual and maybe they think it's just too typical to be seen as a parent or a um, somebody's wife or somebody's husband. See the world around you with new eyes. Be malleable. Experiment. Good luck with that. If <laughs> if you're a fixed sign, good luck with malleability. Um, Experiment with different ways of viewing reality. See the point of view of others. If you haven't been able to manifest your dreams, maybe you need to shift the way you see the person or situation. In earth-based cultures, shapeshifters have the mythical, or I'm sorry, the mystical ability to transform into other forms of consciousness. It's said that these beings were not imagining that they were changing into a specific animal, plant, or stone, they could actually morph into another shape. Just because most people today don't think this is possible doesn't mean that it's not true. This card shows you because it wants you to know that your past does not need to equal your future. Simply shifting your point of view or your belief system can bring an entirely new destiny into being. And they give you some ways to do this. And they say, to deepen your ability to shapeshift, simply imagine that you're an animal, bird, plant, or stone. Make it as real as you can. Doing this deepens your ability to shift your beliefs and limiting decisions that perhaps have, been, have held you back from fulfilling your highest destiny. Hmm, interesting. Okay, well, that's what I have for you, Aquarius. I hope that you enjoyed this. Take care. Bye.